Alrighty, welcome to the top eight of the 64 player single elimination draft. Yesterday was the first draft. Uh, no spoilers, but I'm in the top eight. So <laughs> if you haven't caught that one, it's a good one. I did miss my first pick, which did not happen in this draft. And uh, well, what are we going to take? There's Pluto Delta, always fine. Swords to Plowshares, this one's great. The One Ring, also great. There's Gristlebrand, but I think Gristlebrand's worse than taking the One Ring. So it's really whether you think Swords or the One Ring is better. And I think pick one, pack one, Swords is better. It's really close. Also, guys, Cradle, by the way. Uh, back top eight, and actually getting passed to by Claudio, the uh, Yogg Master in Modern, actually beat me at Pro Tour, one of the side events. <laughs> and then Folero from the draft server, so that's pretty cool. But, I don't know, One Ring versus Sword. Swords is the safer pick. It's basically always good. One Ring can be very good, though. I'm just going to take Swords, and I don't regret it. Um, yeah, there's a Grim Monolith that would have been nice with the One Ring, but I still think I might just take Grim Monolith. There's also Scrubland. It wouldn't be crazy, in my opinion, to like take Scrubland or Loran and to go with the Swords and draft a lower curve deck. Lauren in particular is just a very good card. <laughs> How likely is it to be better to be kind of white weenie versus taking Grimm and going for a higher end play? I know if I take Lauren, I'm going to get to see a third pick Academy and just lose my mind. But uh, there's also Recurring Nightmare. I don't think snapping off Recurring Nightmare this early is exactly where I want to be. If I take Lauren, there's a chance Scrubland wheels because Probe, Grimm, Recurring Nightmare, Mizzix Mastery, no. That's probably not that likely to wheel. Safer pick or more ambitious pick? I'm going to take the one. This pack doesn't have anything that's super exciting. There's no academy. I might take Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual is just a good card. Teferi is also good. It wouldn't be crazy to take Teferi here because this is the start of a good, pretty good blue-white control style deck as well. If there was something like Athalia, honestly, I would have just taken it and gone away. But there isn't. Maybe Teferi, because Teferi Swords is a really good combo. Swords is a great card, but it's especially good in protecting Planeswalkers, and especially good with one that untaps your lands right away. Also, Ignoble Hierarch. I think White-Green can be totally fine, too. Ignoble Hierarch is very good. Probably a better card than Teferi. Dark Ritual is also a great card. But it doesn't fit super well with our first two picks. Hmm. I don't think the lands are better than either Teferi or Ignoble. And I think Teferi is better than Brazen Bar. Certainly Trinket Mage. I'm going to go with Teferi, but I really don't know. Okay, well, this pack has... I'm glad I didn't take the Ignoble because I wouldn't have had as good of a follow-up. There's Hallowed Fountain and Skyclave. Also Bloodstained Mire, but right now Hallowed Fountain is going to be a lot better than Bloodstained Mire. Also Chrome House Seed Shark, but... I'm not really super well equipped for that. I think I just take Skyclave. Skyclave's an amazing card. I don't know that I'm going to play Teferi. Probably will. But I think taking Hallowed over Skyclave would be a mistake. Especially since, well, now there's a Thraben Inspector. I think that card's great too. If White is open, this is a good place to be. I don't regret not taking One Ring. Though I guess I would have taken Dynamo or Lotus Petal here. Oust is okay. Karma Guide's not that good. The best cards in the pack are like Goldspan, Sail into the West, Lotus Petal... And Thraven. Thraven's a really good card. I am going to take Thraven and be pretty happy about it. Okay, so now some green cards. There's Green Suns and Eternal Witness, I guess, Elvish Reclaimer. There's a Black-White Land. There's a Sarah Paragon. I think Sarah Paragon is fine. It would be nice, of course, if we open Black Lotus. Uh, but Sarah Paragon can replay any of these cards and is a pretty solid threat itself. So I'm going to take that. And now I have to decide between Chromox and the Wandering Emperor. And they're both very good. I, I'm, I'm happy I'm playing White. White has seemed quite open, so this has been a good direction to go. Chromox is nice. One of the things these decks often lack is a little bit of speed, so I think I'm going to take Chromox. I like Wandering Emperor, but I also like casting my spells, and I have a 4-drop plus a 5-drop, though Teferi might not make the cut. Having a Mox, I think, is just more important than uh, taking another 4. I don't like passing Wandering Emperor, but... You know, I haven't passed a whole lot of other white cards, so I'm pretty happy with with this start as far as things go. White has seemed open. I have some decently powerful cards like Swords, Skyclave, and Loran. 
Oh, I'll just take Godless Shrine now. I don't think Leyland Binding is looking like a good fit in this deck. Don't care about Zern or don't care about Enlightened Tutor. Godless Shrine leaves us open to be black white. And now I can take Touch the Spirit Realm or Savannah. Touch the Spirit Realm can flicker Skyclave or Loran, which is decent. I guess Thraben. And it's just like a fine removal spell to play. I think I'm more likely to want that than a than a green card. Oh wow, Scrubland wield. So did Anduril, but if I take Scrubland, now I just have a perfect setup for black white, which is great because what black can do is it can shore up the kind of like combo matchup by letting you play Thoughtseize or Tide Hollow Skull or that sort of thing. All right, I actually like Guardian Scale Lord, so it's got backup one and it's a three four flying. So what you do with this is you play this, and let's say you have a Lauren now, then you put a counter on this, attack with a 3-2 flyer that immediately puts like Skyclave into play from your graveyard, or even touch the Spirit Realm. So I think uh, Guardian Scale Lord's the pick. So Teferi versus Ignoble Hierarch, I guess either one, <laughs> neither one is, seeing, is seeming that likely. I guess I could have taken Dark Ritual out of that pack, but that didn't seem like the place to be either. Wouldn't have really helped here. So... I'm going to actually bin the Teferi for the moment. Maybe maybe Teferi makes a kind of reemergence here. Also, picking up Guardian Scale Lord makes me feel good about uh, taking Chrome Mox because I don't think the Wanderer... I don't know. I just don't feel like the lack of a four-drop one, and I, I like having a, a good acceleration. Here, I guess I'll take Scrapwork Mutt, though I don't think I'm playing any of those cards. I think I'm the most likely to play Scrapwork Mutt out of those cards. Both Godless Shrine and Scrubland is, is nice. That is a nice start for, towards black. Also, I mean, there's a lot of decent black cards I could be taking. Oh, interesting. So both white cards came back. White, we're in good position for white. Question is, will I actually play Karma Guide? Recurring Nightmare's gone, sadly. I think I'd rather have Oust. Uh, concealed Courtyard, all right. I basically have to play black now. <laughs> I have three black-white duels. So that gives me... Uh, three free black sources completely reservoir all right back to let's let's get a little mox action here i'm feeling a mox right now i would uh, accept a mana crypt um i've got a new deal for you how about nothing all right well i guess i'll just take stoneforge mystic i don't have equipment i did pass that anderil we haven't seen alja complete or batter skull or gta and I think Giver of Runes is decently likely to wield. Stoneforge is the higher uh, upside pick. Nothing else here really matters to me. So, yeah, all right. We'll Stoneforge Mystic it up. Once again, not loving first picking a card that I could easily get fifth pick or sixth pick, but this is uh, the hand we're dealt. At some point, I'm going to need to open a powerful card, though. I guess last draft it worked out without, doing, without opening anything really busted, but... Uh, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to win this draft without it. All right, what do we got? Ooh, Skull Clamp. Okay, that's a good one. Skull Clamp, I just picked up Stoneforge, so I can go fetch it. Skull Clamp right now works with just Loran, but I can pick up more things. It's a combo with Sarah Paragon. Um, not really a combo with Guardian Scale Lord exactly. And the other card I'd be interested in, Resto, might wheel. There's also uh, Othari, which is a good card, but... I think Skull Clamp is better and on color. Toxic Deluge is the only black card here, and I don't think I'm very likely to, to want a Toxic Deluge in my deck, but I do like Skull Clamp. Also, another reason that Chrome Mox is great, really good with Skull Clamp. It's like the perfect combination because Skull Clamp lets you spend mana for cards. Chrome Mox gives you more mana. Oh, Parallax Wave. That is it. I mean, Parallax Wave is the natural order of this deck in insofar as it's a first pick quality card that I, in this case I'm getting third because it's hard to use, but Natural Order also Guardian Scale Lord can bring it back. So if you have a three power creature in play, you play Scale Lord, make it a four power creature attack and get back Parallax Wave, it's just busted. Passing up on Tide Hollow Skuller, I'd love to wheel that. And I think I should. Do one, two, three, four, five, six. So I just need someone to take Gargaroth or Warchief or Rampaging Raptor. Yeah, well, easy Parallax Wave. Okay, now there's Archon of Cruelty, which is a great card, but I'm not really in a position to play it. There's Walking Ballista, and there's Intrepid Adversary, and I think it's got to be Intrepid Adversary. Like, I could potentially wheel it, but Intrepid Adversary is really good. It's good with Sarah Paragon, because you can play it out of your graveyard and then just pump it a bunch. 
it's good with scale lord you bring it back and mid combat pump everything same with parallax wave or even touch the spirit realm because every time this comes into play you have the option of re-upping and it's a good two drop and it gets skull clan so this is a case where i don't want to risk trying to wheel it i'd say freebooter is also all right but i like intrepid adversary a lot more happy to take path there's also dismember i think path is better killing anything is great this won't wheel because it's just so easily splashable and i mean neither will dismember but i think path is better and here we have an adonto vanguard okay over infernal grasp which i don't really need even need the grasp because i have swords path touch the spirit realm parallax wave and even skyclave so i'm actually doing great on removal and vanguard is fantastic i it's skull clampable and a good threat i don't think I just don't think I need to try to wheel these cards when there's just great options for me. Okay, so there's a Raghavan here, very late. Wow, what is this, a seventh pick Raghavan? Wild. There's Verdant, which is a black-white duel, and there's Esper Sentinel, which would be really good with Skull Clamp and is a cheap card. Let's see, one, two, three, four. One card's gonna come back to me last pick. It's gonna be Sphinx of the Steel Wind, probably. Like. There is a chance Ephemerate comes back last. Right now I wouldn't play Ephemerate, but I'm working towards it. I don't have a single black card. So is it good to take a, a black duel? It, it is nice with Sarah Paragon. You can replay lands out of your graveyard, but I think Esper Sentinel is just good enough that I should do it. <laughs> Eighth pick Palace Jailer? I, I'm the, clearly the only white drafter at the table, at, at least the only heavy white drafter. All right, well, I kind of hope that Ephemerate comes back. Giver did come back, as predicted. Yeah, another reason not to take Verdant, I'm not going to need to splash here. There's just not going to be a reason, even if it's free. The only black cards at this point that I would really consider splashing are is if I wheel Tide Hollow Skuller, I probably will play it. Uh, oh, Resto came back. Yeah, I'll take it. No one wanted Toxic Deluge either. If I open Thoughtseize, I'd be interested. And... I don't even know if Mind Twist is that good. The problem with Mind Twist is I have no acceleration. I have one Chrome Mox, which, by the way, that pick has paid off. I just picked up two more good four drops. Oh, and I have Parallax Wave. So yeah, I have a lot of I have a lot of four drops and not a lot of acceleration. So very happy with that. All I really need to do is open like a Mana Crypt or something, and we're we're in business. Yeah, I will take the Sculler over Pentad Prism and Misery's Shadow. If I didn't have Skull Clamp, Esper Sentinel. Would have been a little less tempting over Verdant Catacombs, but and here I'll take Freebooter. But I think the Skull Clamp makes it really nice to take that. Um, I guess I'll take Pulse's Citadel. All right, can I get a last pick Ephemerate? At this point, I think with Palace Jailer, I might be interested. All right, Wall of Omens that I'm probably not going to play, but is a nice option to have. All right, ha, last pick Ephemerate. Yes, might happen. All right. Never moxes. Minsk and Boo can't take that. There's Mother of Runes and Blade Splicer and Animate Dead, Ancient Tomb, and Lurus. Huh. What do we do here? I kind of think I'm supposed to take Blade Splicer. I don't think I need to take Lurus here. I already have Sarah Paragon. I don't I'm not gonna have Lotus at this point, and Lotus Petal's already gone. Ancient Tomb just doesn't fit super well in this deck. There are definitely draws that it could use, but I have a lot of twos. This is double white. It's okay with those these five cards or whatever. It's good with Skull Clamp, I suppose. I think I want to get these two white cards out of the pack, and I think if I take Blade Splicer, I'm most likely to wheel Mother of Runes. So this is a good pack for me, even though, again, it would really be nice to open a zero-drop accelerator. I think that would really help this deck, but uh, as with any... But Blade Splicer with Ephemerate and Skull Clamp is fantastic. Same with Resto. And I think someone's more likely to want to splash that than take Mother. All right, well, I'm going to take Umazov's Jite here. I have a Stoneforge Mystic. Jite's great. And the next best card for me is like Dam or Elspeth. Neither of those I care about. All right. Oh, and there's Batter Skull and Council's Judgment. I'm going to take Batter Skull. And the reason is I think I'm at Wheel Council's Judgment. And I have a lot of removal already. And Batter Skull is a great hard to have when you have Stoneforge. You know, pretty obvious reasons. All right, here. All right, we're just slamming Figure of Destiny. I don't need Winds of Abandon. Dothy Voidwalker is excellent, but Double Black's a bit of a stretch, and Figure is fantastic. Okay. Oh, wow. Now there's Cauldra Complete as well, and Student of Warfare, and Wasteland. I kind of feel like Cauldra Complete 
isn't necessary. And I think if I take Wasteland, Student of Warfare or College of Complete, in fact, I might wheel both because see, people are going to take Talisman top, the two big creatures is four, Titan is five, another big creature, maybe Emery or Boma. Like the rest of the pack's a little weak. I would be surprised if neither of them wheeled, and of course Wasteland won't, and Wasteland's good in this deck. So we're not really missing anything. I mean, at this point, I'm not sure if I want to play Tide Hollow or uh, Kite Sail Freebooter. I'm pretty sure I want to play Tide Hollow. Okay, a million fetch lands. All right. I mean, there's also a Selfless Spirit, but I have enough playables, and a fetch means that I can play these black cards with really no worries. Can't really play balance. Which fetch is better? I guess I'll take Blooded Strand. I don't really know. They're both basically the same. I don't. I can't really conceive of a difference because I don't think I'm ever going to play a Mountain in this deck. Do I have any blue cards in the sideboard? I have Teferi. I don't know. Let's just take Blooded Strand. Okay, two more packs of new cards, and then we find out if Mother of Runes wield, which I think it will. At this point, I think I take out the Freebooter. And this is 11, so 16 land and a Chrome Mox. I mean, this is looking pretty good. I think Ephemerate's good enough. It's great with Palace Jailer, great with Blade Splicer, great with Tide Hollow, because you can. This is one of the older templated cards. So you hold control, you play Tide Hollow Skiller, you target them, in response, you flicker it. And then uh, it leaves. They don't bring anything back, and it enters and exiles a card. Or rather, it, what it ends up doing is if you have Ephemerate Sculler, you exile two cards, one of which will come back. Okay, so here, do I take a 4-drop hero or I take Cathar Commando? Probably just take Cathar Commando. I've got a bunch of 4s and 5s. I don't think Hero Blade Hold is like, can't miss or anything. Mm, Lunar Relic Warder is solid, but not exciting. We want Mishra's Bauble. I have one fetch land. I don't have Luris, and I don't think Luris is going to wheel. Does Mishra's Bauble combo with anything else? It really doesn't. Oh, it combos with Sarah Paragon. Never mind. That's, that's enough of it. I think Relic Order was already marginal because I already have Cathar Commando and Loran. So I wasn't feeling the huge need of that. All right. Mother of Runes wheeled. So did Luris. I'm still going to take Mother of Runes. I think the Sarah Paragon makes. Luris not as necessary. I have to cut a card or two. I guess Touch the Spirit Realm can probably go. And this is now 14 land. Plus Mox is 15, so I need to cut like a card or two. I think four free black sources means that Tide Hollow Sculler is worth playing. It just adds a nice dimension to the deck. Honestly, I might cut Cathar Commando. I don't think I want to cut Guardian Scale Lord. Is it crazy to cut Rest? I mean, with Blade Splicer, Skyclave, Loran, it's probably crazy. But now here, do I want Elspeth, Sun's Champion, Dam, or Shieldra's Edict? I don't have the black sources to cast Gix, which would actually be good if I could cast it easily. I don't think I have the acceleration to be really that confident of Elspeth, but these are all sideboard cards. I think I'll take Shieldra's Edict as a sideboard. I have a couple of removal spells here. I have Oust and Edict. Edict would be nice if, like, I play against, like, a Tinker or Blightsteel Colossus deck, that sort of thing. Council's Judgment did wheel. Yeah, I mean, we figured it out. All right, well, I do want to play that. Got to have some cuts. I mean, this, despite the fact that, uh, ooh, hold on. Mutavolt versus Mishra's Factory. I think Mishra's Factory is better because it's better on defense, and I don't think creature type matters here. All right, I might play it. Okay, Student of Warfare wield. And uh, Cauldron Complete was the other card. That's fine. Dark Commando can probably go. Maybe Ephemerate just goes at this point. <laughs> Pretty sure. Oh, really glad that the Chrome Mox happened. Mm -hmm. Okay. So currently, I'm going to play 16 land plus Chrome Mox, probably. I could see an argument for 17 with... Wasteland and Mishra's Factory, but either way, I have to cut some cards here. I guess Selfless Spirit can probably go. That's a decent sideboard card. Well, probably cut Life from the Loam. I have three equipment for the Stone Forge. <clears throat> don't want to cut Skull Clamp, and I don't want to cut Batter Skull. Do I cut? I probably have to cut Ephemerate. I don't know. It it's very good with Blade Splicer and Palace Jailer. It's okay with Guardian Scale Lord, but getting this into play is already kind of like a, a pretty big thing. It's good with Sculler. It's not really good with Stoneforge. It's okay with Intrepid Adversary. None of the one drops. I just think my deck is 
got all awesome cards, so kind of hard to decide what to cut, you know. Um, maybe what I do is I cut Tide Hollow Sculler, and then I don't play. You know, I just don't play. I, I play Flooded Strand because of Sarah Paragon, and then I don't play any of the other lands. Yeah, might as well. Like, I, I can easily side in Skull or Freebooter if I'm playing against a, a deck where I think those will be necessary. And then I have to cut one more, and I think maybe I just cut Batter Skull or GT. Batter Skull or GT. I think Skull Clamp looks pretty good here. I have a lot of one toughness creatures. It's really great with those. Let's cut let's cut GT. It's really only good against creature decks. Not great against non-creature decks. And against creature decks, I have so much good removal. I have a lot. I, Guardian Scale Lord is also a potential cut, but it's so good with Parallax Wave. I think I like this. Wow. And I think Mishra's Bobble, because of the Scale Lord combo and the minor combo of Flooded Strand, is probably good enough. I could also shuffle with Stoneforge if I need to. I think that's decent. Just get him playing this and drawing a card right away. Plus, it, I mean, it shrinks the deck by one. All right, I think I'm doing this, and I think I am going to play the Wasteland. Well, I know I'm going to play the Wasteland. The question is, do I play Mishra's Factory? I think I do. It's really only bad with Figure of Destiny and Student of Warfare. Otherwise, I feel like a million white sources. I'm going to have 15 white sources. First goal over GTA. Yeah, I think so. 13 planes. All right. I think this is where we're at. We have a lot of options in sideboarding. So certainly the right lane. Very happy that I drafted white weenie. Um, you add a Mox or a Mana Crypt to this deck, and it really pops off, but I think this deck's still pretty good. Like, against Fair decks, I have a lot of good removal to, look, to really, like, slow them down and Skull Clamp to grind them out, along with Parallax Wave. And against Unfair decks, maybe Game 1 can be a little tougher, but I have Tide Hollow Skull or Kite Sail Freebooter to side in. I also have Wasteland, which is nice. The one thing I guess I am missing is, like, Thalia would have been nice, but, you know, sometimes it just isn't. All right. Let's see how this goes. Already time for round one. I would like to play first and Oh, yeah, we are keeping this hand Here I think it's really clear that I lead with mother of runes because My plan is to go turn on mother of runes turn two stone forge with mother of runes to protect the stone forge and From there But I've got Loran I've got wasteland so Kind of like that. Uh, we just have the batter skull plan all rolled up here there's a lot of matchups where this is just nearly unbeatable because in order for them to stop me from batter sculling, they need to have a removal spell for Mother Runes and a removal spell for Stoneforge. And then I even get to go on turn three, put in batter skull, wasteland your land. So I like where we're at. This is a, an ideal opening hand, I'd say. And we'll find out if we want to side in the black cards or not, but. I like I like starting just straight up. Play all your uh, just all your planes and white cards, and then don't worry about that at all. Okay, opponent. Yep, there's seven. Other of rune. Boom. Let's go. They got the triumph. <laughs> Drew better school. All right, well, that, that's fine. Uh, I, even though wastelanding that is juicy, I still think it's a lot better to go Stoneforge, get Skull Clamp, pass the turn. I don't know which land would make me want to attack with Mother of Runes on turn one. I don't really think there is one. Even, even Library of Alexandria probably wouldn't. Ballista for one. Okay. Let's go... Wasteland, Bobble, Bobble U, Aviar Trespass, Wasteland that, pass the turn. They think, they think I'm skull clamping. Oh, I am better sculling. Oh, Sarah Paragon will be excellent if I get a chance to that. All right. 
Batter Skull. Tear Asunder. Okay. They did do a good job of answering. Ing. Um. So, a Danto Vanguard in attack here. Not drawing a land there's a bit of a bummer because they did successfully kill my first two plays. So, I guess the Stoneforge Mystic, you know, they didn't kill the hat, they, they just killed the Batter Skull. Mm, they can't, they don't have black mana, so that's good. Lands are kind of what I'm looking for. Let's attack. A student of Warfare. I could have played Intrepid Adversary, but I, I think against Double Blue, I'd just rather play two spells. Do they have a play end of turn? No, they don't. And uh, this also sets up me skull clamping next turn. Oh, the Wasteland really, really messed them up. Okay. Good to know. What? I think I'm just... Go for the throat, as it were. Oops, Stone Forge, and then just attack for eight. And this, this just threatens lethal over two turns here. Oh, they... Force of Vigor to pick Pitching Fiend Artisan? I mean, they have some good answers here, but they have some pretty bad cards. Like, Fiend Artisan is not a good card, and Graveyard Trespasser on the Splash is also not very good. Like a Green Sun Zenith or something? Nope. All right, well, playing against that, it makes me want Batter Skull less. They have multiple ways to kill it. I don't know, is that better than GTA? <laughs> Definitely don't want Tide Hollow Skuller. I mean, I do want a second equipment. I guess I'd rather have Batter Skull than uh, the Gite. Don't think I wanted Board and Sculler from what I've seen. And don't really see a need yet for any of those. Same with Cathar Commando. All right. I like where we're at. Let's fire this off again. And it's possible if they have a creature deck, I'd rather have Jite than Batter Skull. But Jite actually costs, in a lot of ways, more mana than Batter Skull. Like, if you Stoneforge a Batter Skull, that's two mana. Jite costs four mana because you have to either Stoneforge or play it and equip it. And I don't want to end up in an attack where they mid combat kill the Jite and I'm kind of left holding the bag. So I think I'd rather do that. The other option is to put an Oust. It is possible. No, it's not really impossible to side out all the like targets for that stuff because I'm not taking out parallax waves, so I think this is fine. All right, well, this hand's great. Not as good as the last hand because Mother Runes and Wasteland are both excellent, but this hand's still very good. Oh, Giver of Runes. Actually, <laughs> this kind of ends up in the same spot because I still get to do the whole, the whole Stoneforge deal where I get to go turn one Giver, turn two Stoneforge with protection. Ledger Shredder, sure. Into Snuff Out. Okay. All right, all right. Yeah, we'll just kill the Ledger Shredder if it becomes a problem. Too worried about that. And Don't Forge Mystic. I'm still just going to get the Batter Skull here. Like, if they have a way to kill Batter Skull, so be it. This curves out really nicely here. Empire Hex Mage. Oh man, I kind of hope they're a Merit Lodge deck because my deck's very well set up again. And I think I'm going to play Student of Warfare. The reason I like Student of Warfare over Figure of Destiny is next turn I can pump Student of Warfare to a 3 3 pretty easily. Ooh, they might not have a removal spell. Oh, they're going to ninja me? No, that's not. It's going to be mana inefficient, but I am going to path to the ninja. There's no way I'm letting that thing hit me. All right. Works for me. Would have been nice to get to Stoneforge. I got to waste a mana there, but so be it. All right, let's level this up. Yes, this is just trading for the... No, it doesn't trade. They can't, they can't kill it with the Hex Mage because it has first strike also. Hex Mage can like block, deal first strike damage, and then sack, but that doesn't work in this particular instance. All right, pass the turn. They have Ledger Shredder, two unknowns in hand. I'm going to toss in a Batter Skull, and we'll see if they've got a spell for it. 
Graveyard Trespasser. Sure. Not really going to stop me from doing my thing. I got to remember that at any point, Hex Mage can shrink this to a 1 1. They're going to trespass her, the giver of runes. And of one card in hand, so yeah, the batter skull is going to get a chance to do its thing. Batter skull. Raw. <laughs> I guess the hex mage stops parallax wave, but parallax wave is a good. Uh, let's go ahead and just hit with both. I'm actually I'm willing to trade student of warfare for hex mage at this point. Matter which. All right. This goes like that, and then what do I do here? I think I just play blade splicer. You have one card in hand, yeah. This is going to trigger the Ledger Shredder, but they only have one card in hand, so it's not like they're getting a massive advantage out of this. Oh, they got a pretty big advantage. They get to discard a completely unplayable card for a plus and plus one counter and a new card. Pretty good. But, I mean, they're, they're just incredibly dead here, barring something very good, which, I mean, this is cube. They can go... They always have the option to, like, Ancestor Recall into something awesome. Well, I mean, look, they cast Treasure Cruise. That is a pretty good one, right? Like, that's a good start. I still think they're they're pretty dead. Wow. Black Lotus is a good one too. I mean, their deck is still just like a collection of Soltai cards, which Yeah. I mean Treasure Cruise into Black Lotus into Thoughtseize is certainly like a way you can try to win this game, but I'm gonna have to take the parallax wave here. Let's see what their play is here. A fracture identity on batter skull. Like I said, it's all it's cube. You can always uh you can always win the game. Have a turn like they played Treasure Clues, Thought Seize, Black Lotus, Fracture Identity. Like, yeah, that's a good turn. They started with one card in hand at the start of their turn, and that's what they did. So this game is now now they're they're actually winning. It's close at least. I can counsel his judgment the batter skull. But oh really? It's, it's actually attack. Take it though. A vote for Batter Skull. Now I get to hit with this. I don't know, trading that damage doesn't seem very good. I'm going to keep this in hand. I don't know how, how likely it is to come up, but I feel like it's worth representing a card in hand. They can flip their Graveyard Trespasser, maybe. They have two cards. All right, I'm going to go for the double block here. The 3-3, three, three, apparently, yeah. The problem is if they don't play anything and flip Trespasser, it basically trades for figure anyway, so I kind of feel like it's just worth offering this trade. Yeah, that worked out. And I don't take a bunch of damage. All right, if they have a big play, then it would be bad for me. They did not. Still don't really get the attacking with the Ledger Shredder here. Yeah, they're just racing for no reason. All right. I mean, I might, I, I might win this game. It's actually going to be really close now because uh, now I can't attack them. Mother of Runes, that's a good draw. Pass the turn. And then Mother of Runes is going to give Rexian Golem protection from blue in a second here. Uh, Force of Vigor and Terra Sunder are still pretty good here from the cards we've seen. Yeah, not really sure. Oh, such a sick turn. Two attacks. Like, it's like their Ledger Shirt got goaded. <laughs> and they made it. A couple of attacks that didn't really didn't work out. Oko Thief of Crowns, okay. A food. That is not great. Alright, I'm gonna need to draw now I'm the one who needs to draw something. I've drawn two land and a mother runes. Why are they attacking me? 
like losing my mind here? What's going on? Uh, all right. So I can attack and kill Oko. I think that's just what I do because I can attack them. They go to eight then they go to two. Huh. Let's just attack and kill Oko. Right. They just don't attack with Ledger Shredder. Like this game is so much harder for me. I guess they're going to get me down to five here, but they clearly can't have two spells because they would have played it over the last few turns. All right, I'm at five, but they're not, it's not even lethal even if it grows. Oh, that is game unless they have something. All right, I really didn't expect to win that game. Well, I did until the, the turn where they played five spells, but then after that, I shouldn't have won, but the, Am I missing must attack on this? <laughs> like, I think if they had just sat back with Ledger Shredder, I mean, maybe the Intrepid Adversary top deck was enough to win because it was going to give my whole team plus two, plus two, but it really made it a lot easier that this thing was always tapped. All right, well, we got round one. On to round two. Let's see if we can take down this tournament. Already taken for round two. Playing against Folero, fellow Cuber. He's on the Cube Draft Discord. Always good battles. And uh, yeah, we'll keep this hand. Flero is mulliganing. This is not a hand with Chrome Mox. We haven't had one of those yet, but I'm not complaining. This hand has Mother Runes and a Stone Forge. This is exactly the curve you want. Uh, don't like that. <laughs> All right, well, you know what? I'm still going to see if my fair white cards can battle against my opponents with Black Lotuses and Soul Rings. No plays? Dang, that's... A Ooh, there's a Chrome Mox. I don't mind that at all. Um, What do I do? <laughs> the funny thing is I drew Chrome Mox, and yeah, no, I, I will play it up. Let's start with Mox. Exile Blade Splicer. That's yeah, Stone. I figure if I'm going to Stone Forge anyway. Ooh, it's actually kind of interesting what I get. I think I get Mox Gold. Up. Uh, I might as well play the Mox first. Because that way I don't get dazed. I mean, Flora could have Underground Sea Daze off of that. So I do like that against a black deck, I have Mother Runes up. And that, at least as of yet, I didn't make a play. So that is helpful, but we'll see how this works out. I think that I like Batter Skull more than Lamp here because I'd rather just put pressure on. And I, I have Sarah Paragon as like kind of a way to refresh my squad if things go wrong, but we'll see. Oh no, we did have Fire Covenant. A command, the card destroy. Planes, I mean, I, I'm very far from casting Sarah Paragon now, but Discarding Sarah Paragon doesn't... Oh, does he have Deluge as a follow-up? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I guess, I guess I'm just dead. Drawing Chromox was so bad for me. <laughs> We're drawing first? Still going to Deluge here. So clear. I saw that Toxic Deluge go late, and I knew it was bad news. All right, well... This student of warfare. I really wish I had skull clamp now. I didn't really anticipate getting all my stuff destroyed. This batter skull rotting in my hand. I'm just gonna stop as opposed to playing rapid adversary. Alright. Had I not drawn chrome mox, it would have worked out a lot better for me. You know, if Falero just has no more plays, maybe I can win this game. It didn't really seem very likely, but now I actually think I'm like a pretty big favorite. We'll, we'll see. Is he missing action? A color, maybe? Can't level up the figure to also. Send these in. All right. I'm not playing around another Wrath. I'm just going to put Adversary and level Wow, I thought I was like a zero percenter. I mean, clearly it wasn't zero, but I thought I was just dead. Because Falero binned every single card I had, but I'll take it. Playing against Jund. 
Jund, Jund, Jund. Um, K Command and Toxic Deluge. Don't like that. Memory good. It doesn't work against Deluge. Okay against K Command. Like you can save a creature. Selfless Spirit doesn't work against Deluge either. I kind of do want Cathar Commando because you can you don't have to overextend. You can play it end of turn. Makes me want to cut Esper Sentinel, especially on the draw. Just because it's like kind of bad against Deluge and K Command, especially like K Command, it's an artifact sniped. Also makes me want to cut Chrome Mox for just another land, I think. Don't want to put in Tide Hollow Skuller. Basically, having artifacts means that K Command is just like an extra thing, which I yeah, look, I'm going to have some artifacts anyway, but I just don't have to make it easy. And at least so far, it looks like a removal deck. Chromox is less good against removal decks. Does this make me want to cut Batter Skull? I don't know that I want to cut Batter Skull still. Touch the Spirit Rift. No, I think this is where I'm at. Let's see, we'll get a little more information this game, but again, hopefully we don't need it because hopefully we finish things off. This hand's good. I like this hand. Turn one. I mean, it's just turn one student of warfare, but. We'll see, it's possible on turn two I run Planes, Planes, make this a 3-3 three, three attack. Yeah, that is what I'm going to do, actually. I, I really don't see it. I think Skull Clamping to taking a, take a creature off the board really doesn't make too much. Soul Ring? No Soul Rings. All right, well, Batter School is a terrible draw. The thing is, it's not like Umazawa's GTA looks a lot better here. And Stoneforge for Skull Clamp is good enough that I really do want to run Stoneforge, so. Arc Ritual, uh-oh. Turn 2 Shieldred, well, that is good, but this deck does have a lot of removal for it, so hopefully I can, can pick one up. I'm going to need it pretty fast. It's Whisper Gain 4. It. All right, Council Judgment, Swords to Plowshares, Path to Exile, all of the above. And I have, I have a bunch of ways to kill it, though I probably board and touch the Spirit Realm now. Sir. This isn't going to work. Got a double block Shieldred. With my two three threes, I, I don't know what am I supposed to do. Like not do that? Can't just take it. Given that I'm chumping with this, it seems like it makes sense to double block to me. Okay. Two pentad prism. Okay. Max and I drew path. Perfect. Path the Shieldred. See what she got. My plan is to then attack for seven and then skull clamp the blade splicer, and I think I'm gonna wasteland the Jetmere's Garden on the way out. First. Would have preferred swords to plowshares, but I mean Flare's got a lot of mana. I don't really know what that deck is trying to do. Out. Or maybe not, I don't know. Um the Flare has so much mana, let's just Do this. Kind of like just playing around Toxic Daily, I think. Last turn, Flo did not have removal, because you would attack Shieldred into two 3-3s three if you had removal, of course. And with Pentad Prism, it's like, is the difference between 8 and 9 mana? How much is that? You have access to all colors. It really doesn't seem that Wastelanding Jetmere's Garden is as good as protecting against Toxic Deluge with Skull Clamp Equip. K Command still gets me reasonably well. But the nice thing about K-Command is if you want to blow up the Skull Clamp, then you don't get to kill any of my creatures. Because currently it can't kill that, and it could kill that with the Destroy Target Artifact, but then the Skull Clamp's gone. Or then the Skull Clamp triggers. So we'll see what this is. Memory Jar. Mmm, trying to kill me with Shieldred, I see.
All right, jar away. This can't be good for me, but I mean, we'll find out. Mox diamond, sure. Crack jar. Blanks. I have lethal in play. You got to do something. K command plus deluge gets you out of this. Just one or the other doesn't really. Like, deluge for four kills all my creatures. Oh, I guess actually the skull clamp doesn't really work this turn because of memory jar. That's, that's unfortunate. The deluge is pretty good here. But uh, deluge still leaves me with a Mishra's Factory and a skull clamp. And then my, my other hand is not very good. Bitter Reunion, okay. Discarding a big thing? No, discarding a land. It's a weak start. I mean, it really doesn't do much, it's, you, you, especially since you're discarding this hand end of turn. If you had a good play, you just make the good plays. Playing Bitter Reunion first could signal that you have excess mana. Bill has access to seven mana right now. I mean, at this point, he's seen 25 of 40 cards in his deck, so... If, he, if his deck does do something, now is the time. <laughs> we'll see if that's the case. What does K command? Blow up batter skull, kill the kill the, the golem. I draw two that then get discarded to memory jar. Yeah, that's pretty good. That still leaves me with student of warfare, skull clamp, and mistress factory. Played your land. What else you got? I was just dead if I didn't draw that path, but... This deck has some good removal for, for Shieldred. Oh, it's Palace Jailer, too. Yeah, so I have, like, in Parallax Wave, five things that kill Shieldred's pretty good. Obviously, a turn two Shieldred on the play is also pretty good. Still eight mana, six cards in hand. Besides Shieldred Memory Jar and then, like, the removal spells in game one, which, by the way, game one, I think Flare may have had just blue cards in hand because it had all Jund mana in play and didn't, couldn't do anything. We've got, I guess you've got like this, I don't know, four, maybe five color deck with a bunch of artifact mana. I really, I really don't know what this deck truly is, but we'll see a little bit more here. Assume something's going to happen here. Good thing is that these seven were kind of weak. Like I didn't draw Parallax Wave, Scale Lord, Sarah Paragon. Any of the cards that I, that I didn't in seeing. Like basically all my expensive cards. Those are the cards I want later. I'm somewhat wondering if I found My guess is no. She got a play? I mean, Flaro is very skilled, so the longer this takes, the more likely it is to not be terrible for me, but we'll see. This is a complicated enough turn that I could easily believe something bad happened. All right. So... A command, kill Batter Skull, deal two to Student of Warfare, and then Toxic Deluge for two. Okay, so it's like you want to leave Skull Clamp in play instead of leaving Batter Skull in play. Sure. I draw two. Three weak cards. Eh. Would have liked to draw Sarah Paragon, but it's okay. And then we discard our hands. And get our memory jar hand back. Oh, you had something else and an Oath of Druids. Talisman, Necromancies. All right, let's draw. I drew a land. Oh, man. Unbelievable. All right. Uh -huh. Let's land the Jetmere's Garden, play a land. Mac for three, and pass the turn. Look, I'm just going to pretend like I'm playing around Oath. That's what I'm doing. I hope I get, like, Thought Seized or something. Lowering is not that scary at this point in time. Whatever this is, is though. What the? Sundering Titan. Okay, well, I get to Oath. Can I just Oath up a Palace Jailer? That'd be awesome. He <laughs> has to blow up three of his own lands. <laughs> oh, that's, that's great. Would have had to blow up Jetmere's Garden, too. All right, let's Oath. Hmm? Palace Jailer. Danto Vanguard. Oh, that's not bad, though, because, let's see. Ten. One card in hand. Seven. I think I go... 
Skyclave your Oath of Druids. Bull clamp the sky. Pass the turn. And now I have lethal on the backswing. So if you attack with Titan and I take it, I have lethal. I could also chump with Skyclave and draw two cards. Talisman, sure. Talisman go, no attacks then. All right. Draw Stoneforge Mystic, nothing to get. Start skull clamping then. Two, there we go. Alice Jailer. That tap my plane because it's gonna. The funny thing is it's gonna blow up your mountain and swamp too. And then Mother of Runes. And send for two, and then I have lethal next turn. I'm the monarch. And you only, you're actually only on five mana now with a Mox Diamond of any color, but kind of awkward mana situation otherwise. So there we go. Oof, on to the finals. Let's see if we can take this down. Oh, love to see it. Alrighty, time for round three. Solid hand on the draw. I mean, I'm certainly going to keep this hand. This is the kind of hand that really gets... Uh, you know, has a hard time against anyone who leads on like a Mox, but we beat Sol Ring, we beat Black Lotus, so don't mind this. Two land, and with two four drops isn't ideal. Opponent is mulliganing. So I guess, what is our curve? If we draw a land, I think it's pretty clearly turn one student, turn two level it up, turn three Thraben plus adversary. I don't draw a land, it's a little bit more complicated because there's an argument to turn one inspector, turn two crack clue. I really do want to hit land drop number four on turn four. I'm a love of man. Um, I think given that I'm playing against Grim Lava Mancer, that is a bit more of a fair card. I think I'd rather lead with Raven. I'm not in a, such a hurry to race them. Draw. Not a good draw. All right, let's pass. We'll see what they do. It's possible we end up pathing the Steamkin. I don't really want to do that, especially after my opponent mulliganed. Oh, Island. So they're just red blue. Huh. All right, well, let's draw lands. Batter Skull is a really bad draw. Land? Okay, land is good. To land. So let's go. Student of Warfare. I just play Sari. That's the turn. If they have two burn spells, things get a little dicey. The Grim Lava Mancer is annoying, but I have Sarah Paragon in hand, so I kind of feel like I have a decent backstop. I guess I could technically attack with uh, Raven, but that seems pretty bad if they block and play a red spell. See what they've got. Play something that doesn't. Okay. Hmm. That's not so bad, honestly. They can minus on my intrepid adversary if they want, and then oh, they did a student of warfare. Great. Even better. Because now, oh wow, I've got a bunch of options. So option one, which is what I was going to do at the start of the turn before I drew Skyclave, was just slam Parallax Wave, wave their two things, attack them for four, or kill Chandra, attack them for three. The other option is Skyclave plus Path, but now it's got to be so busted. Send. Attack my Now, Chandra's down. I have two creatures in play. The wave still got... Plenty of counters, and then I can go, if I draw a land, I can go Paragon plus Student of Warfare. Still have Path and Skyclave up. And they started by sacking a land, which is great news for me. And then, if I draw a land, I could also just play Batter Skull. We'll see what they do here. Nothing. Oh, Mish's Factor is even a great land. End and see what's up. I'll go see Paragon. 
but they don't have a counter spell. They don't, and I play Student of Warfare. And then they're, they're just dead next turn, and I have Parallax Wave to remove blockers. And if they have removal, I get to save my creatures with Parallax Wave, because the other thing is these things coming back, you know, they don't really matter. They're, Parallax Wave effectively killed them. By the time they come back, it's irrelevant. All right. I think it's blue-red. I do like Batter Skull. Dark Commando, Selfless Spirit. Right. Did I build my deck perfectly and I never have to sideboard? I should probably put GTA in, give what things look like. And I do want Chrome Mox here. I do want Wasteland and Mishra's Factory. Maybe I cut Esper Sentinel. Yeah. All right. On the draw here, see what we got. <laughs> the one time we drew Chromox, it was a disaster for us, which is funny. Fantastic hand. Three one drops and a council's judgment. Can't really ask for more. So the real question is what do we lead with? Put it mold again. It hurt. Look, if our opponent moles then uh, that makes up for the fact that they probably have a Mox or something in their deck. It's pretty likely. We do not. Hold to six. So Student of Warfare hits for the most on turn two, but costs me the most mana if my opponent has an answer. I think I'm going to start with Figure of Destiny. Because figure the, the thing that's nice about Figure of Destiny is Turn two, I can attack for two and play Thraven. Or I could attack for one and play both of these. It kind of depends on what they've got. Steep. Sure. Thraven. Student of Warfare. And then next turn, I can make Student into a 3 3, Figure into a 2 2. Or probably just Wasteland. The Badlands here. Though I might have to cast Council's Judgment next turn. It'll kind of depend on what, what they do once again. What, are, what do I want to draw here? Basically, now I just want to draw cards that cost four or more mana, like Parallax Wave, Sarah Paragon. Oh, they're Metamorphing? Ugh, Fire Covenant. Never mind. That's horrendous for me. Yeah. Okay. Not good. Let's... A cover with a four drop. Um, back a pass. Yeah, now I'm going to need one of my big spells to, to kind of get me back into this. Well, knowing that Fire Covenant would have changed how I curved out, I wouldn't have played all three. I would have probably kept one of student or figure in hand. Uh, I think land go because don't I don't want to use Council's Judgment when they have Chandra in their deck. I will do something to that Steamkin response. I guess I guess I'm gonna path it because I'm probably gonna Swords the Grim. Get a swamp depending on how they're splashing this thing maybe just like another island and do I swords here I think I do and the reason that I'm leaning towards casting swords on Grim is almost any creature I draw I would want to kill the Grim before playing it and next turn I'm going to counsel judgment the Chandra I might as well take two less damage it just feels like I'm going to have to kill the Grim Lava Mancer no matter Wild Mana Crypt. <laughs> Do they play it? Interesting. Okay. It's not, not an obvious play. I mean, they're at 14. All right. They draw a spell. Those judgment. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's go for Sarah Paragon. Uh, Parallax Wave would be not that good. Wouldn't mind. Even Intrepid Adversary could be okay. Or they lose a bunch of flips. 
They do get to sack Fiery Islet as well, so currently I'm certainly behind. We're at equal life. We have equal cards in hand, I guess, but yeah, they're playing a spell. An Oliphant, and I've used all my removal. All right, Palace Jailer, let's go. <laughs> Basically dead now. I mean, not dead dead, but they have now two cards in hand, and uh, they lose the flip at least. And they can sack the Fiery Islet. And they have spells. I don't have any spells. E. All right. Two. Looks like I might just be dead. No, not quite dead this turn, but I'm... Oh, no. I'm very close to dead this turn. Well, if I draw Parallax Wave, it at least buys me a little bit of time. I'm going to take... 11 this turn. Going to 4. Yeah, had I drawn Palace Jailer last turn, it actually wouldn't have worked out quite as well as I would have hoped because they, they had Squee. Alright, well, Fire Covenant's a beating. Hopefully they don't draw Fire Covenant, or if they draw it, they can't cast it right. Alright. Okay. The play game 3. Yeah, fine with not playing Esper Sentinel. I think I want Selfless Spirit because of Fire Covenant. That does actually stop Fire Covenant. Like, that is a good interaction. So, I like that. Lauren kills Mana Crypt. And Metamorph. Yeah, that's, that's going to be enough. What do I cut? On the play here, I like Giver of Runes. I like Mother of Runes. Student of Warfare. I like all those. I don't really want to cut Siri. I want to cut Resto. I want to cut Batterskull. I don't want to cut anything. <laughs> uh, Mishra's Bobble? I guess I do. All right. On the play, I don't draw Chrome Mox, huh? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to keep this hand. It has two drop into three drop into, well, three drop removal into Parallax Wave. What I kind of need to see with this hand is a little bit of action, some creatures. And maybe them not to have like a mana or something. This hand's a little slow. Certainly possible that I... Goblin Guide? Interesting. Don't actually mind that too, given my... Student of Warfare is coming up? Sure. The Land Intrepid Adversary. Now, I can easily race their goblin guide if they choose to attack. If they kill the adversary, that's a little unfortunate. They're just going to sit back, huh? Yeah, if they just pass, I'm probably going to go grand student, level up student twice. If they're thinking about attacking, indicates to me they don't have removal in hand. They might still have a creature to play. Certainly do, okay. They have a preordain also, that would be pretty bad. Loran, well. Great here, but it's okay. Alright, now I'm gonna pass and I'm gonna hope they play a creature next turn and I just slam parallax. Or that they, you know, do nothing good next turn. <laughs> That's also a possibility. Goblin Rabble Master. Uh, yeah, that, that actually wasn't a very good play for them. Oh, never mind. They had Fury. I'm going to lose this, damn. I, th I thought I was going to win, but Fury and Fire Covenant ruined my day. They did pitch the Fire Covenant, but, I mean, who cares? Okay, so how do I win this? Well, Goblin Guide stopped me from drawing the land. <laughs> <laughs> I guess well no I'm actually going to start with Council's Judgment just exile the Rabble Master if I play Parallax Wave and I have to exile a bunch of stuff it's just going to run out of counters I need a little bit more than that alright yeah Fury gets me damn well we tried we're drawing Sarah Paragon well that's actually a really good card if they don't have anything this turn. And I go Sarah Paragon. Student of Warfare. So oh, they're Force of Will pitching Frexy. 
All right. Well, if I find it a little bit demoralizing that they're managed to pitch both Fury and Force of Will in the same game in their Goblin Guide deck, like I guess it happens. All right. Batter Skull would be a potential out. I mean, if they miss on this turn, I'm drawing Selfless Spirit. I guess I go Parallax Wave then. Parallax Wave, the Grim Lava Mancer. This is a close game. It's not over. I mean, I need them to miss, and I need me to hit. But if they attack with Goblin Guide, I get to look at the top card first. It's a pretty big game. I mean, you could argue they shouldn't attack with Goblin Guide. Batter Skull? All right, let's Parallax Wave... You know what? I'm just going to parallax with both. I'm just going to not take the gamble here. I'm going to wasteland that. Play Chrome Mox. Uh, Loran. And play Batter Skull. Okay. Don't want them having double red. Parallax Wave buys me one more turn. You know, if they miss for one more turn. They didn't need double red last turn. I was just cutting them off for the future turns. All right. Fades, draw another hit. No, but, you know, I don't need... I don't really don't need much. I need... It's more like if they don't draw a good card, then I'm going to win. Because Batter Skull will pull me ahead really, really quickly here. One more turn of missing. All I ask. That's not true. I ask for more than that. But I'll take one more turn of missing to start with. Next turn, I'm getting to attack for six. All right, action. They get their Grim back. I don't care. I don't care about the Goblin Guide at all. You get Grim Lava Mancer back. All right. Big spell. Oh, that was a big spell. Stoneforge Mystic. See if this resolves. Because then I get Umazawa's Jite. Oh, Remand. Well, I'll play around miscalculation. Actually, actually, no, I'm going to change my mind now. I'm going to get Skull Clamp now. Back for six here. Because I can't, if I could have equipped, played and equipped GTA in the same turn, I would have very clearly gotten the GTA. But now, do this. Clamp the Selfless Spirit, draw two. Oh, yeah. That's some action. I'm at 13, so I'm pretty safe. They can Grim down the Stoneforge Mystic. I don't care about that. And then I have Palace Jailer and Resto. If they play Chandra, they need to have another red to kill both my creatures. And even if that's the case, I still end up in a pretty decent spot. Hellrider. Don't care about that. That is not going to do it. Because unless they have another way to kill Batter Skull here, they can't even attack. Oof, such a close game. Fury. Fury was a beating. My, my fortunes changed immediately once Fury hit the board. Well, then it left the board. Badlands. Okay, so now they do have the red source. Interesting. What do I do? Uh -uh. Yeah, that's kind of funny. I didn't really want to draw GT because I thought I was going to Stoneforge them. That's okay. I think I start by just attacking with Batter Skull. Not even going to equip because I want to see how they block first. The problem with playing GT and attacking is they can block with Goblin Guide and then Grim the Goblin Guide, and I just kind of wasted my whole turn. I want to play one of these fours. This so right now they can double block with those two, and then I kill Hellrider. That's a thing they can do. They just took it. Okay. I'm just going to pass then. The reason I'm passing is kind of assume they didn't use Grim end of turn? Huh. I don't really get that. Okay. 
I want to leave Resto up and Stoneforge can put the GTA in so they don't know that's coming either. I didn't really think it was a good idea to play Palace Jailer here because let's say a Palace Jailer the Hellrun and they go like, Grim your Palace Jailer, Grim your Stoneforge, Chandra your Batter Skull attack, and then all of a sudden I just have nothing in play. They have the Monarch and all that. Also I'm at 17, so I'm really not that worried about getting burned out. They don't look like they're a deck that has like Underworld Breach, Brain Freeze or anything like that. So I feel like I'm in pretty good shape here. What I was hoping was they would try to Grim the Stoneforge and I could Resto to save it. Because I thought they were going to do that. I actually think it was... It really made no sense, okay, uh, to not do that end of turn. Oh, boom, there we go. 50 treasure chests, two uh, trophy points or whatever, some qualifier points, and 500 play points. That'll make up for a lot of uh, uh, 01 Telerian Academy decks, won't it? Oh, that was great. Exceedingly fair deck, but the only white drafter at the table and got reasonably paid off. Didn't play against anything too unfair. I didn't play against Full Arrow on like an Oath deck of some kind, Reanimator Oath, but managed to get there and then played against Burn, which is a pretty good matchup generally, though Fury and Fire Covenant made it hard, and round one played against Sultai stuff. So, oof, what a draft. Thanks for watching. That was a lot of fun. This was, again, the finals of a 64-player event, which is why I won so much loot. And, uh, we're going to try to get into a few more of these if we can. But as always, I appreciate you hanging out. We played White Weenie. We got there, and uh, we were the winner of the four-player draft. you love to see it. I'll be back tomorrow with another draft, and I'll see you then.